I'm Marie Eldridge from Handy Quilter, and this is Leonie West, and we have a ruler that you're going to love. Hi, this is our Jade Spin Effects. It's a five inch template, and it's designed to make a circular rotating pattern where we're rotating the template to create petals that go around in a number of rotations. So a motif, like a flower kind of look, yep, is what like we're going for. That's it. Okay. How do we get there? How do we get there? The first thing we want to do is to mark crosshair reference lines. And we have a tool here which is for marking crosshair reference lines. As you can see, we've marked some reference lines on here. We mark a centre dot with the hole in the middle and mark each of our lines. That will give us eight rotations. I might want to do 16 rotations and this template we can turn so that our rotation lines line up on the lines that we've already drawn and that will give us 16 lines. So we could have 16 petals instead of eight. Okay, so we're just marking this on with chalk or we could use an air erase marker. Yep, your or favorite marking pen. Our favorite marker and we just have eight lines to start with and yes. we can add to that. And add to that, go from there. You can go up to 32 lines with this and make it a very complicated design. But for me, we're going to start with eight. Start easy. <laughs> the easiest way to go is start simple. So once we've, we've pre-marked some lines here, then we'll take our template. Okay. So here's our template and as you look at this, you can see that there's a little breakaway part here, a part that comes in and out. For the handy quilter machine, we can just lift our hopping foot and we can put the needle or put the hopping foot inside there to stitch with. So because we have those lines, you we're going to Coach line up me through. our We're, reference there line here that runs through the centre of the template. Okay. We'll line up with the line we've marked. We want to start with our foot in the centre. Foot in the centre. So is my needle going to go right, right into that in centre center hole and I'm going to bring up my thread? That's right. Okay. And we'll always come back to that centre point for doing this design. All right. I like to have my machine so set to stop. So I'm, I'm lined up here. I also have a line that goes across yes. this way that I can line up. That gives you an ex a double reference. Okay, and again with the um, handy quilter rulers, you want to make sure that you can read the writing, then you know that the etching is down and we, everything's accurate. Much more right? accurate. Are we ready? Etch. Yes, go Yay! for it. I'm so excited to so do around this. around the template. All right, we're just going around to the top which should hit right at my guideline. And maybe you noticed right there, I do have a little piece of handy grip on there. Yes. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is we're going to... Turn 180 degrees. Turn 180 degrees. And I'm just going to snip that so I'm not fighting it the whole time. You can do, sew these by going around one, all the way around each one, but you get less buildup of stitches in the middle if you do that rotation to 180. Once we've sewn the next one, stop in the centre again, and we'll now turn 90 degrees. This 90? Yes, that's 90. <laughs> <laughs> Sew that one. Okay, and up to the top. Back to centre. Back to centre. And turn 180 from there. And do the next. You could stop at this point and you could have four petals. I like the shape of that, just a little teeny kind of point at the edge of that. It's just enough. Just enough, okay. Now we're going to do the next, which is the... So now, work my way around work the Work your circle. way around. All right. You've stabilized it by putting those first four in. Okay. It'll also give you less build up if you come across, do the opposites. So I'm just holding on to this. I just want to keep the ruler so it doesn't uh, move. I want it stabilized, and it seems like if I just hold down at the bottom and up at the top, that seems to keep it down. Oh, it's looking cute. You could stop there. That I could? could be the design you use oh. without having any more into it. I and could stop there. 
But I, I you, got, you're going to do. Oh, you got want to do some feathering in here now. So uh, a little fill work. Little fill. I saw Leonie's, and so I have to. So I'm straight on, right? Yes. And now we're going to turn the template. I'll just move across here, so that the edge of the template touches the stitch line. Oh. That will give you a quarter of inch spacing without having to measure anything. Okay. I sew up, sew up till my foot touches the line, and then come back again. So we're double stitching in here. I okay. love the effect of the double stitching. I want to do another line. Turn it that. F Turn it till so it touches again. So just touching. The, I can't see from here, but just touching that stitch line. Good. Then if it doesn't look right, I can <laughs> say, well, it's Leonie. <laughs> it's nature. So oh, does it have nature. to be perfect? All right, and I'm slowing down just as I get to that stitching so that I don't go over. Would you do another? You could do another. I can stop yes. two. I can just You can take keep it going. As, as many as you like. Oh, let's do another one. They also don't have to touch the top line. What? Because your edge of your foot is quarter of an inch from needle. If you let the foot edge touch the top line and then come backwards. Oh. Which is, a, I like that. There's so many <laughs> options here. All right. We have to let everybody take a peek at this. Okay. So here's the trick to these. Why we have this little. The key. I want to change templates and I don't want to have to cut my thread or do extra stitching I just take the key out we have a piece of tape which actually helps it stay on there it stops you losing it as well <gasps> now I could leave the needle down add another template and put another design in there okay but I'm still doing baby steps so here we go there's our first so we could go all the way around there and we would have that nice motif yes that would be beautiful we can add to it. There are so many things we could add to it. But we're going to do this one in reverse. So we'll go to a new little grid here. So you're getting two designs in one template. Okay, we're gonna move over here. Okay, I'm all set to do another one. So this time we're going to change the orientation of this. Look, I can slide this on with the hopping foot down, right? And that makes it easy on machines where they don't have a hopping foot that lifts like the handy quilter does. So we're going to do that. That's what we did before with the centre in that way. This time we're going to turn it so our centre is the fatter part of the template. Oh, I like having you here. <laughs> Keep me honest. Okay, here we go. Oh. So now we have that skinny point coming to the top. Look how cute is that. Okay, and... Flip it all the way and check my lines. I like that we have these lines that we can line up with. And our lines are marked on both sides of the template, top and bottom, so you have the ability to line this up. Okay. Do four of those. So it's our north, south, east, so and same, west. Yep, just line those up. And then when we've done this one, flip the template the same, take the centre back as we did earlier, and we're mixing and matching the two different orientations. So you've got the wide one. Look how, it, I don't, can you see those cute I'd, little, <laughs> oh, inside there, they're just cute. So now okay. if we do it this way, <gasps> we've got way. the wide part coming out the top, which is the first one we did. And mixing the two together. Whoops, I kind of got a little thread burp there. All right, let's go this way. The more rotations you do, the more complicated it becomes, but you also build a lot of secondary spaces to fill in with tiny little micro fills and things. I think okay. with all quilting, go gently, it's not a race. When you're learning a new template, take your time and learn the different things it can do. For sure. Okay, we're good. We're, done. we're ready for the magic moment. The reveal. The reveal. <laughs> so we've used the point coming out and the point going in. You could fill these spaces in. Oh, that's just what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start filling things in. All right, so there's so many things we can do with this. And I think that we can do one more. I'm going to stitch a circle over here yep. and then we'll yes. add petals to like the center Outside and a circle. try that out. All right. 
Okay, this time I've stitched a circle in the center and I just used a circle from a Swiss cheese template. Now I'm going to bring this in. So I have a test here. We're just see how, oh, look how easy. I love it. All right, I'm gonna put that back in. And just drop it in, put my tape there. All right, this time I'm going to line up from the edge of the circle and put that petal on like it's the petal of a flower. And when we get back to the circle line, we'll just freehand okay. around that circle so you can move the template away. You know what? I'm just going to kind of use that template we'll use to the edge. just guide me around there. Okay? That's it. Yes. All right. All right. And you're going to freehand it. Oh, girl. <laughs> Maybe. So All we, right. So is this what you would do is do four, four again? Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna let that ruler keep me kind of honest and steady. All right, and what kind of things would you use these on, Leonie? Great for anything with a block, um, where you've got a piece block even. It doesn't have to be a plain block to quilt this over. You can have a piece block and put it over the top of your piecing. Uh, a lot of people think that piecing should be quilted as each individual piece having its own thing in it, but piecing is much nicer if you unite the pieces of the block together. So by doing this, you'll have a um, design that is complete and full, but covers all those pieces in a block. Oh, so exciting. This is just a different kind of style. I like it. <gasps> Oh, all right, I think that's enough that we can, oh, I like that I can just pop this out. And there you can see what it's starting to look like. Okay, you go ahead. You could fill in this little piece with little micro stippling. Smaller circles, different size circles in that circle. Oh. It just keeps growing and growing. Yeah, we could add so much to this. The thing I'm excited for is that we can do this as a border you can as do a border. well. Okay, so if we were going to do this as a border, let's just set this up. What if I, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go one, two, three. Across. Right? Mm -hmm. Across. So I'm just going to pretend I already did that one and start on the end of there. You can always extend these as you do them. Do this one, go only to this top point move the template up, do the next one all the way, and then come back into center. So we can have it double petaled and make oh, it so it fits a much larger block. You're making my mind go. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all these things we can do. Okay, so there's my first one. I'm going to work this in a border. So there's my first one, and then I'm going to go halfway. Halfway. And just slide. And just slide. Okay, but I have little guidelines here from that. So and you would use the edge of your block or your sashing or your border edge to keep that straight. Because we have lots of... Little guidelines. Little guidelines. Love the guidelines. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, there you can kind of get a... Thanks, Leonie, for all of these ideas. This is one of the series. This is a jade. And then this one in particular is called the spin effects. And you can see the effects. I'm excited to try all of these. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you. Hope you enjoy.